What is up, everybody? How's it going? Happy St. Patrick's Day Eve, as y'all saying. Uh, Pudgy, uh, Rob saying that he'll be able to get out and ride again because the snow is subsiding out there in the Pacific Northwest. Um, Pudgy, who was originally, we were hoping to be streaming together tonight. Um, fortunately, uh, not a good turn of events, so that's the way it goes. We'll get a ride together in Akron someday. Uh, Yinzer, how's it going? Michael Burnett, Large Marge, Mark Day, CB, JMZ, what's up? Grand Subject, Farley. Oh, before I forget, I did put it in the description, but just seeing um, JMZ. So we've talked about doing, well, we didn't talk about it. We are planning it. Whoops, hit my mouse. Hit my mouse there. <laughs> uh, J. Dandy, Tuan, Dylan, planning a meetup. So... Uh, I think, I think I have the details if I just type in meetup. Yeah, we'll see if that works. But anyways, um, I was, uh, I mentioned this, I think in the discord, but, uh, Olight actually sent a bunch of stuff to be able to give away when we do the meetup. So I haven't thought of exactly how we'll do it. I think, um, one thing we'll do is. I like the idea of whoever travels the farthest gets first choice. One thing I think that would probably go first, uh, maybe, is they have this new bike light, the BFL 900, a 900 lumen bike light. I've never used it. I'm not going to open it. Um, I have a different bike light from them. And then a couple flashlights. This one is cool. I actually have this one. They sent this one for me to have um, uh, a different exact same one. But this has a UV light, and they're really like slim, UV and regular then another little flashlight, and then um, these safety lights, which I've also been using. I'll show, I have one on this bike right here. But they're kind of interesting. These are the Gobers, but they have like four different colors. So for me, they're almost kind of like party lights. Like tomorrow we have bike party, and everyone like, a lot of people like light up their bikes. And so I have the one that's on the bike I'm going to ride tomorrow for St. Patrick's Day set to green. So I'll actually have like a green flashing light on the bike. So anyways... That'll be anyone who wants to come to that meetup April 29th and April 30th will we'll have a contest. And so Olight has some lights to give away. And then we have some of the um, – got some more, too. Uh, Modal sent some more of the Infinity Loops. These ones I'm using tomorrow, and I'll show you why in a second. But I've got another set besides the ones we've already given away. So I was trying to think of who else I could reach out to, but I was like, Olight's been cool and uh, Modal's been cool. So – Maybe we'll try and find some other stuff. I know Otis, with his half of the ride, is going to have some giveaway stuff, too, from some of the brands that Dirty River works with. So, yeah. What's up, Jay Dandy? Dylan? Tim? How's it going? Northern Colorado? So, bouncing bike life. Yeah, I did link, and I my my influencer self now, um, I did link uh, the Olight stuff in the description of this video, and it'll be in any video I talk about it, but... They did give me a 10% off code, so if anyone does like their stuff, you could at least save some money on it, too. So, yeah, I dig them. Like, you know, at first when they reached out, I assumed it was some just garbage Amazon company, and it's the it's the headlight I use. I love it. So, these safety lights, I can't remember what I said. They're not, like, really bike-specific for per se, but they have a clip, so you could totally use them on a bike. You just need, like, one of the elastic-style rubber band things to go around your seat post that I think most of us probably have a hundred of by now. So it's not a big deal. Keep the UV light out of the motel room. Yeah. I, I was like, why does this have a UV light? I kind of had forgotten about UV lights. And then I like shined it around a little bit and you're like, Oh yeah. UV lights. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but <laughs> Yeah. That's the kind of thing that I'm like, no, nah, I don't, I don't need to know. I'd rather not know. So Oh, you like the chin? Yeah. I keep, it's funny, I shaved, what, two days ago? And I was just going to shave my face completely. But then I'm like, man, I have this whole winter beard. I got to at least do something with it. And so I'm like, yeah, I might as well leave the mustache, at least for St. Patrick's Day. It is so funny to look at myself in the mirror because I've had the beard for so long now. Since late summer, I think, was might be the last time I shaved. And so it's like, I look so skinny to myself. I'm like, oh, man, I'm a... I'm in shape, but it's just, yeah, just shaving. So, what's up, Muskrat? Grand subject. Bob Darrell, what's up? So, Bob is one of the guys I'll be meeting tomorrow. So, we started a tradition uh, 
the first year of COVID because everything got shut down in Ohio on fake St. Patrick's Day, as some of you guys have alluded to from my video, because nobody could contain themselves. They just had to go out and, you know, go crazy. So we started a tradition of meeting at our little abandoned train bridge. And so we would have space. So me and Bob and Large Marge, I think it was just me, Bob, Large Marge, and then Ryan Hugh, I think, happened to be riding by that day down the towpath. And we called his name. And he came up and joined us because the bridge, the old train bridge, goes over the towpath. So it's a tradition that started in 2020, and we're keeping it up anyways now to meet outside on the bridge and have a beer. So that's one of the things I'm going to do here in a minute is get my – I did a little shakedown ride. If you saw, I just posted a video like an hour before I went live on the bike. But there's a couple things I want to do to it. Um, but yeah, so we meet up, have a beer at eight thirty. Then now again, what that year we just just had the beer. I brought some some bakery stuff and then rode on. But now we could actually go and do stuff again. So then we'll head over to Kenny's Brewery, Missing Falls, and get some breakfast. And then I don't know, we didn't really plan it. I was last year we rode to Barberton then to get some put some miles in and break up the drinking and not just be completely hammered by noon, which worked for a long time but still ended up getting a little carried away but yeah so this year i don't know we'll we'll talk at the bridge but i was almost thinking do we want to go and maybe ride out to kent instead and jay dandy if you're if you're around too maybe that would be cool too we could ride out towards kent and meet up with you for a drink out that way i don't know we'll see what everyone is feeling in the morning so but yeah put some space in there and tomorrow night is bike party as i was talking about like how the idea of like i want to like have like all my like green flashing lights. I'll show this one too. This is a different version they gave me that like hooks on like a little tiny uh, carabiner and you could put two on there and you could actually put an Apple air tag in the center, but it's the same thing then when you, um, you could snap them off and then like, you know, set them on your bike. So are these ones? Yeah, I did charge them, but yeah, they have like the multicolor function and then you could scroll through the colors, so yeah, that's how I'll be using them tomorrow. And then I think you, is it a long press or a red, read the thing, I think I, no, so it must be a double click changes the mode then. Oh yeah, so a double click in each color changes the mode, so kind of fun, but. This place looks like a Jackson Pollock painting. <laughs> Hey, what's up, Bradley? Too many. Hey, what's up, Big Nate? How you doing? Uh, Grant Subject said, glad to see the vintage steel outside. Yeah. <laughs> and Yinder said, can't drink all day unless you start in the morning. It's funny because... I don't know where that that quote originally comes from. Is it? I don't know if it's from a movie or if it's just one of those general things. But I've I've heard my dad say that because we do like a Black Friday brewery crawl every year, and I, yeah, it's just funny that I've heard him say that. I mean, you know, a guy who's a bank president, he didn't drink when we were like he stopped drinking when we were kids to not like have, set that example around us and all that. So I think it's funny to hear him say that line when we now go out on Black Friday, but. Hey, what's up, Remus? Jay Dandy said you're around, but you might melt in the rain. And you also, oh, that's right. You also said that you were thinking about going to bike party. Looking at the forecast now for tomorrow, it's all like 50%, and it actually dips. Like, this is just the latest. It's, it's spring in Ohio, late winter, it changes like nonstop. But it doesn't look that bad, and it just started raining now. So I'm kind of hoping maybe everything moves through. The other thing weird about riding all day tomorrow is going to be that it's actually starting warm and getting colder throughout the day. So usually, like, you know, St. Patrick's Day weather in Northeast Ohio could be anything. But if it's going to end up reasonably warm, we usually have, like, a cold morning. And then the sun, if the sun comes out, it might warm up a little bit. Like, I think the last two years were kind of like that. But, um, yeah, tomorrow it's going to start out in the 50s and go down. So if it does get damp, it could be it could suck. So one thing I actually put in the bike bag, um, I decided to bring one of the uh, uh, what do you call these little waterproof bags that like 
This is a Sea to Summit version that I bring when we tour for stuff that I want to make sure stays dry. So I figured might as well bring one of these tomorrow and bring some, like, you know, socks and put my extra sweatshirt or whatever I decide to wear tomorrow in there. Probably leave in my rain jacket. The highest chance of rain is right when we're starting, so... Hey, what's up, Roland? Racer, how's it going? Raymond? Tim going for the part tool guy. Look, yeah, um, I'm drawing a blank on his name. I can't believe it. I just watched his latest video where he built a uh, mountain bike up. But Dry bag, that's the word I'm looking for, Pudgy. I, 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 why do I even live stream? I'm like, I turn the camera on and I can't remember words for anything. I'm kind of like this in real life, though, too. So <laughs> ask large. Calvin, yeah, Calvin. The part tool guy's name is Calvin. Oh, racer, you guys are still getting hammered with snow. I knew, I knew you guys were a lot, but I didn't know it was still going on now. So last night, last night we rode. You no, know, we said you watched the video, so you know. But in general, for everyone else, like, and by the time we were coming home, I think it was probably only like thirty-one, thirty degrees out. So it got pretty cold. But today it started off cold and just got like nicer all day. And like I said in that video, I didn't plan to really go out and ride today, but it was like, I think mid 50, I think 56 when I went out and I knew the chance of rain. So I'm like, just went and did like a 13 mile loop. So yeah, I'll show the bike right now. Cause I do one thing I, I said in the video and I'm going to do it now is slide the saddle forward. These vintage road bikes now are, and my stem on this is long too, but I'm just so used to my gravel bike and with my sciatica and back, like being stretched is just not fun for me anymore. Even though I have the saddle pretty low on this bike and the bars aren't super low, they're about even, but I should show while I'm talking about it anyways, because I do want to do that. But I don't know. I was going to look. I don't know if I have any stem adjustment on this. It's a 3T. I, I'm guessing I already probably have it maxed to as high as it uh, would go. Because this bike really needs an Aero 3T stem. <laughs> so. Hey, what's up, Ed? I'm wondering if will I be able to get the angle without just having this mic block the whole thing? Because this mic I have to be so close to. But. Everyone playing the sciatica drinking game, take a shot. Nice, Budgie. <laughs> this is what I'll have tomorrow, too, tomorrow morning. Uh, Bonehead Red from Fathead, so... Yeah, it's crazy, Racer, how you guys have had such a rough winter because that's how our last winter was. And then this winter has been super chill for us. I'm still over it, but. Yeah, and this is a fabric saddle. This is the one that came on my Raleigh gravel bike from Otis. But, and I used to have the Black Brook saddle on here, but I swapped them because I just, you know, I ride 5,000 miles a year on that bike and only a, only a, you know, couple hundred miles a year now on this bike but uh this used to be my touring bike so it had the brooks on it and everything but These old style seat clamps are such a pain. Like, uh, you loosen everything, and then you have to worry about the angle slipping, the whole thing sliding on the post. But yeah, I found myself completely trying to ride on the front of this saddle uh, the whole entire time I was out. And the other annoying thing about these 
as as you turn them sometimes it actually adjusts the tilt you know as you tighten the the nuts on it it's looking like it's looking like it's straight looking like it's still pretty level Yeah, so this is just a high 10. I'm sure it's straight gauge. Fairly heavy, heavy steel bike, but just a mix of everything else on here. Like, definitely the definition of a parts bin build. Yeah, that'll work for that. Oh, yeah, and then the, uh, the reason I wanted the uh, infinity tools is because you need the JBL speaker attached to the rack for special music. Not that, is there a way to do, oh, from here. Pogues all day long for sure. Oh yeah, we're in business there. Ah, can't do that from the front. Yeah, those are the two things I just didn't have time to do before we started streaming, so and I'm just going to not want to do that later. I'm just going to worry about setting my clothes out and getting ready and hitting the road in the morning. I haven't been sleeping well the last few nights, so I've been like sleeping in more, so I'm totally off schedule. But Black Ball said, Calvin Jones is your guru, but he's no bike man for you. Nice. <laughs> yeah, someone on the stream, we were talking about bike man for you, and someone brought up the oyster farm and sent the link to the channel. So I checked it out, and we dropped the link on here before. Uh, the tires racer, the front one is a – oh, come on. The rear one's just a gravel king. They're, they're both 38 millimeters, but the front one is the Pan Eraser. Uh, I'm drawing a total blank. I've had them on a number of bikes, even the narrower ones. Oh, no. They're the Continental Tour Rides on the front. So they, they got kind of a cool tread pattern. I've, I'm trying to think of what. I had them in 32s, I think maybe on my... I had them on a road bike in 32s for a while, and these are the 38 version. But they make them in a bunch of sizes, as I remember. But Yeah, and then the wheels are Vueltas. They are cheap uh, cheap wheels, but they've, they've been really good. I think part of the benefit is they kind of have like a little bit of that deep section. Um, and they have aero spokes, which doesn't matter, of course, on this bike. But I think the fact that their deep section has made them hold up pretty well because I've really... I've beat them up a fair bit, and they're still true. They've never gone out of true, and yeah. I mean, they're definitely not the lightest in the world, but they're not the heaviest in the world either. For like what they cost, I think it was like a $200 something wheel set maybe. Um, and they were rebranded. They're Vueltas, but I got them on eBay new, and they were, uh, 
they had some kind of other really ugly stickers on that I just pulled off, but. Is that a dropper? No, no, there's no dropper on this bike. That's, I'm guessing what you were seeing, it's the hanger because it's center pole brakes. Uh, but yeah. And then just the tail light on there. I know that's not really, um, I know you can't really see much on a live stream, especially without it being zoomed in. I usually switch out the camera, bring the zoom lens down here, but just haven't had time. Hey, Patty, what's up? <laughs> Yeah, Matt, the Brooks saddle does look good on here, and it's really comfortable on this bike. I just don't ride it enough to justify just having the Brooks saddle, like, hang out on there anymore. Um, you know, and I'm not going to go through the trouble of switching it because I thought about that myself. Like, I'll put the Brooks back on there, but, you know, the rest of the weekend I'll be jumping back on my rally and riding probably a lot of miles, you know. So, but it does look good on there. But maybe I'll score another used one eventually. So. Uh, Racer, you said you used to do a trick with that style of seat post clamp where you would flip it and tuck it under the saddle. It doesn't work with every seat, but if you can do it, it hides it. Yeah. I think I've done that on accident. <laughs> so, uh, Muskrat, no, this, um, you asked if it's the first road bike I got after I used to ride just my Trek mountain bike. No, my white Peugeot is the first road bike. No, that's not even true. I got my dad's Motobicon and I fixed up my dad's Motobicon and rode it for a while and then realized that that bike was heavy. And it was actually, even though it had like this really pretty paint job and it looks really a really really nice i had a friend in the studio the other day i have it upstairs and he was like this bike looks so sweet but he's not a bike guy and i'm like yeah it's actually not that nice <laughs> but yeah i got the white peugeot then i got the viscount but yeah this bike was really um a uh f my friend josh it had a someone had done a hybrid conversion to it so it had like this these goofy flat bars with like foam grips and this boat anchor of a crank with a triple and it was just like it was built up like so horribly and he he's a history nerd so i think he had done some research on robert R roger riviere and assumed it was probably a nice bike it wasn't that nice but it was it's actually pretty cheap but it was horrible to build so he was like can you turn this into like back into like a 10 speed style bike road bike for me and i said yeah he died so i turned it into my more like gravel touring bike but yeah, that was, so yeah, no, they're, so later, it was my first, I considered this, like, I really felt like I was building, like, a true, like, bike packing gravel bike rig, you know, um, and I do, like, when my rally is down, before I had, like, uh, the Marin build up and stuff like that, and even, even last year, when I was getting my rally worked on, it does have the 38 millimeter tires and stuff like that, so it would be a bike I take on, like, the industrial gravel rides if we're not getting too gnarly, so. Yeah, I'm bummed you're not making it up too, Pudgy. I was really looking forward to it. Looking forward to it the whole weekend, the stream tonight and everything. But we'll we'll do it. We'll get it we'll get it some other day. That's how life goes. Shit shit happens. Hey, what's up, Sleepy Holler? I might have put this beer too close to the freezer stuff. There's a little bit of ice in there. Um, oh, Yinzer, you said, do I use any frame protection? 3M tape, ceramic spray. Putting 3M tape on your mountain bike is a pain in the ass. Um, I put that like helicopter style tape on my frames when I'm, where my frame bag goes. So my Marin and my Raleigh have it just so the straps of my frame bag don't like wear through the paint. And then a little bit on some bikes with the head tube, um, this bike, if you saw it up close, it is so like it has so much like so much patina that there would be no there would be no point. Um, and then on my Trek 500 too, because I did use that for touring after this bike, 
I put some some of that 3M tape where stuff rubs. But yeah, I've never used any frame saver or any stuff like that, which I would like to. But the fact that you have to tear your bike completely down and then let it dry and all that, I would love to have it in my rally, but I haven't. So. Sean says, thank your first vintage bike last week, 88 Novero, and a brand new electric Expedition cargo bike. What a week. Nice. <laughs> Roland said I should crank Bicycle by Queen on my ride. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I actually don't, you know, I had an older speaker that I brought on tour with us one year, and then we got like that, and it was it was supposed to be waterproof, but we got like absolutely inundated in six hours of a downpour and it and it did ruin it but in general i don't like bring speakers on my rides that much anymore there's a couple times but saint patrick's day is one day where i'm gonna listen to some red roses for me and uh rum sodomy and the lash by the pogues while i ride around so Hey, what's up, Dimitri? Uh, you didn't miss too much. I just did some real minor bike adjustments, sliding my saddle forward and stuff like that. Attaching a speaker for some St. Patrick's Day music while I ride tomorrow. <laughs> Pudgy said, I don't think we're allowed to flip it and tuck it under until after 10 p.m. Hey, you do, you know, no pants. You know, as, long as, as long as you're not live, you could do whatever you want. Bike man for you and Sheldon Brown might have been brothers. Yeah, I don't know what Sheldon is there is and this is a I don't know, maybe this is a dumb question. I don't know. Is there video footage of Sheldon Brown? Like I only know like the famous picture of him with the helmet thing that Yonda even has in his um like in his toolbox. And like I've read the website. I especially when I was getting started with vintage bikes, read Sheldon Brown stuff all the time. Still use it as a resource, but I've never I don't know if there's does that, has anyone made YouTube videos with Sheldon Brown stuff? I would, but Bike Man for you, I, I, his yeah, his demeanor and stuff. Both those guys. It's funny you say that because I got into them at like the exact same time. It was like, you know, searching the web to read stuff about like fixing up vintage bikes and understanding bike parts. And then Bike Man for you was the guy I was like watching a lot with the, uh, you know, trying to build stuff cheap. You know, like I was really worried about spending money on anything so <laughs> on my bikes so i was always trying to go budget as possible and bike man for you always had those great tips so i'm trying to think of what the brand of tape i have let me it's right there let me grab it because it, it's really easy to work with i actually use like the soapy water and stuff and you can move it around it's what pathless pedaled recommended i think whatever russ said because he like had a whole video about applying that stuff whatever he was talking about I just I think I just bought that exact stuff Yeah it's a uh, This is called racer's tape so I think it's automobile stuff I always hear people call it helicopter tape I don't know why This is ISC racers tape, but yeah, it's great. I find it's pretty easy to work with and I have taken some of it back off and it hasn't been a problem, but most of it now has been on there, you know, for like years on my truck and it hasn't like discolored or anything like that. Uh, but Yeah, I guess you guys are saying like with the curves and getting around, I guess it depends on what you're trying to get around. So, you know, most of my bikes are really classic tubing bikes. So I think if you're you're putting it on like carbon or something with more form to it that you were trying to protect, I guess like you were saying some mountain bike stuff. On my bikes, I'm usually just, you know, doing like basically a cylinder. And then if I need it to be thinner, you know, I'm cutting it or maybe tapering it on a corner or something like that. I know some people go through the whole making templates and all like that kind of thing. 
I guess I just haven't had to do that too much with just the way my bikes are and what I'm protecting. But yeah, it's going to depend on what you're trying to really do with it. You out, Sean? Have a good night. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if there's a benefit to the like the nicer or if 3M stuff is nicer and the hair dryer. I've always been cool with the soapy, soapy water getting this in place, kind of squeegeeing all the air bubbles out and letting it dry. Uh, I've never had, I've never tried to even hair dry it or anything. I've just let it dry and it's been totally fine. Uh, I don't know if they're different or not though. Oh, Pudgy's name and all the uh, Irish music. I actually just, on my way home, I was picking up some uh, items I needed to photograph from a local company today. And on the way home, they had a song with Van Morrison backed by the Chieftains. I guess they made an album together, but I am familiar with them. Uh, I'm not a Flogging Molly fan. I've never have been. Like, I don't, I don't think they're bad. I just... When I hear that, I'm like, well, I'd just rather listen to Shane McGowan or the Pogues. Like, also, Stiff Little Fingers, but Stiff Little Fingers aren't as... Uh, they do a couple songs with an Irish... Like, a little tin whistle and stuff like that, but they're pretty much just a punk band from Ireland that sings about Irish politics, but yeah. Yeah, Pudgy, share your list with me. I do use Prime Music, so... Hey, what's up, Danny? Uh, said, yeah, sometimes it's hard not to blow money on stupid things for your bike. Well, it's funny because now I'm way, well, when I was getting back into it, I, I loved riding and stuff like that. But now, like, to me, to buy nicer stuff for my bike, like, so not, I guess not stupid things, but I don't mind spending money on quality stuff for, like, especially, like, my gravel bike and, like, the gunner build I'm doing because I ride them so much, like, and I literally spend less money on my car these days because I ride so much. So, you know, if something goes wrong with your car, like how many hundreds of dollars are you in, like right off the rip? So the fact that like I can make like a really shitty car last now because I ride my bike so much and that I ride so much that I want some stuff just to work. So like I still have fun. Like I'm still going to go ride my Roger Riviera tomorrow and enjoy like the friction shifting, the top tube shifters and be a little more cautious with my brakes, you know, and stuff like that. Like when it comes to like the bikes I care about, I don't mind like buying nice stuff for them. Like I'm not someone like I've said before and I don't have a problem with it, but I don't have like Chris King headsets or like white industry cranks or any of that stuff. Uh, like I said, no problem with it. But like when it comes to like the brakes, like I do buy like those, I do spend more money on the brakes now. I don't mind, um, you know, when my levers didn't work and Pudgy had some Altegra levers and he gave me a price, like, I'm like, man, that's more. If I would have, like, four years ago, five years ago, I would have been like, that's more than I spent on the whole bike. And now it's like, no, these these are the levers I need. It's it's a totally reasonable price, and they're going to work awesome, you know. So I'm of both. I guess I'm totally split. It's like I love to build up just like a total rat parts bin build bike and ride it and have fun on it and just make it something unique. And then I like to have a bike that – even though it's not a tens of thousands of dollar bike, has the stuff that like is modern and works really well. So, oh yeah, Dimitri, like chainstay protection. Yeah, that's really common. Um, like a lot of my vintage bikes come with like the they have like the silver ones on there already, and I do see that on modern. Even some modern bikes come with a. Uh, protection on the chain stay but i know some people do add that later if it doesn't have it oh pudgy have you seen the fingers a few times so have i uh yeah love that love that band but again yeah not really a saint patrick's day band plus they're also from uh which is ireland but northern ireland and they're very yeah overtly political in a way that i agree with but Oh, Muskrat said there is a Sheldon video out there. I'll have to look it up, or if someone has a link to drop in the Discord, do it.
Danny asked, what got Irish beers on the list tomorrow? The thing is, we'll end up going to brewery, so I'll be drinking, like, stouts or something, but from a craft brewery, or even, like, what I'm drinking tonight, and that my morning beer is going to be a bonehead red from Fatheads. Uh, I don't think we get good Irish beer around here. Like, I don't like the American version of Guinness. I've always heard, and I think Pudgy was saying it, too, that, like, when you're in a you're in a pub in Ireland and they pour you a pint of Guinness. It's something different. Um, yeah. Now like liking craft beer, like yeah, Guinness or what's the, um, the red, the class classic red ale from Ireland. I used to drink all the time. Um, Smittix. Yeah. Smittix and stuff like that. Those aren't my style of beer anymore. So yeah, for me tomorrow to be like what missing falls has on draft. And then, you know, if we go out to Kent, it'll be, you know, since it's a wee early, probably some kind of stout. So, yeah, so there's Pudgy said the list right there. Guinness, Boddington's, Harp, Killian's. Yeah, Guinness, I think, is gross. So, like like I was saying, I I, I totally believe that it's different in Ireland on, on, on an old school draft. But Guinness in the bottle here or in the can here, I think, is like is not a very good beer. It's like a light, sweet beer. It's funny because when I was 17 or 17, like in my early 20s, I felt like it was so heavy and now it feels so light and nothingness. But I think out of that list, Pudgy, Boddington's is probably the best. Boddington's is probably pronounced right. Oh, Bradley, you, you said you had Flogging Molly and Skinny Lister at your venue a few weeks ago. And Bradley, by the way, I finally, because between the live chat, even though you actually use regular names more than mo most people, it's still just between like sitting here and live streaming and the Instagram stuff takes me a minute. Now I've seen all your Instagram stories of you being behind the soundboard. It's really cool. So, Yinzer said $400 on a bike sure looks way better than $400 on a car most of the time. I Almost always. The $400 you spend in your car is something you didn't want to spend and you don't get to see it, right? <laughs> Dimitri said, totally forgot it's St. Pat's this weekend. Yeah, I I don't, it's one of those things where I'm like, you know, like like I said, last Saturday around here, a bunch of people are like pub crawling and wearing green, and I'm like, that's stupid. But I've always, if I'm able to, like, have gone out and had drinks with friends and celebrated St. Patrick's Day. I, I don't know, it's just always been a thing in my life. Like, even when we were under 21, I remember, like, driving up to Cleveland to see the parade. It's just, I don't know, it's always... It's something I don't forget. <laughs> like always have like always have done something for it. Racer said never got with Guinness. It's too flat. Yeah. And Jay Dandy said Guinness on draft he likes not good in a bottle or a can. I remember a couple years ago, like after I was already into craft beer, but this is probably still twenty fourteen, me and uh my girlfriend at the time, like walked all the way from where we lived in West Akron to Highland Square, stopping at the places along the way. And so the first place we stopped, I'm like, it's St. Patrick's Day, I'm going to drink a Guinness. And I remember that's the last Guinness I ever had. I was like, that was on draft, and I was still like, ah, man, I just don't like it. Uh, yeah, Pudgy, isn't that funny that you're right, that I actually know how Smittix is pronounced, like one thing. Well, also, I get so annoyed with the corporations and, like, local businesses that still say St. Patty's Day, P-A-T-T-Y apostrophe S. That is, like, completely offensive to the Irish. Like, Patty is, like, Patty would be here, a woman's name. Uh, if you want to say Patty, it has to be with two Ds, not two Ts. I was surprised. Dairy Queen had a post on Facebook with Patty with two Ts, and I'm like, really? None of your... People knew that that's totally wrong. Like, locally, I get it when someone messes up. 83 Brewery here put join us for St. Patty's, and I messaged the guy. I'm like, hey, I don't care. I'm I'm not Irish, but you're also posting something that's wrong. It's like, if you're going to make an excuse to day drink, maybe learn something about the – a little bit about the culture, and like, that's not a word that would ever be used in Ireland to describe the day. But you guys – I'm a nerd, so that's how it goes. <laughs> uh, 
So Eddie said the foreign version of Guinness is really quite good, heavy on the coffee notes. Yeah, you just get nothing here. It's just so watered down. But Hey, what's up, Arthur? Arthur said, good evening, everyone. Anyone drink room temperature stout? This is served at our local Irish pubs. Um, I don't mind. Like, I refrigerate all my beer out of habit. But, like, definitely with stouts, I like them better, especially strong stouts as they warm up. So many more of the uh, flavors come out of a, a good stout as it gets warmer. And then I knew that, too, about, like, um, yeah, Irish pubs and even even British pubs, right, that have a classic uh, hand pump. The beer comes out warm, right, or room temperature. Oh, yeah. Pudgy said Guinness did taste better over there, but yeah. I always hear that. So I don't know if they really do make something different over there or are you caught up in the, uh, you're in Ireland, uh, but yeah. I think the other thing too is tastes have progressed. So I don't know, maybe Guinness has watered down what they make for the American market and at the same kind of time, the American palate of craft beers is like, you know, strong, uh, flavorful beers have just gone up, you know, because, you know, people used to look to England for like beers that were good, ales and, you know, stuff like that. And the U.S. is the leading place for flavorful beers now. You know, the rest of the world is catching up with the U.S. It's been a complete flip since, what, the late 90s? So... Uh, racer too, back to bikes anyways. <laughs> Said I mentioned Chris Bling, which is funny. I'm from an era of loose ball bearings, so anything sealed cartridge to you is good enough. People look down on the no name or generic stuff, but some of it's way better than Yeah, I Yeah, I, I agree. There's it goes both ways. I mean, I don't you know Chris King is expensive. Do I would I say it's overpriced? No, I think the stuff's gonna last forever, but yeah, I'm a I'm more of a middle of the road guy when it comes to headsets and bottom brackets. Uh, you guys are talking about Stone, the OG West Coast, yeah, for sure. Pudgy said Galway Hooker Hazy IPA was one of the best hazies you ever had. Oh, and Dimitri said you don't drink, so maybe at yeah, St. Patrick's Day is kind of a, it definitely is a drinking holiday, so. <laughs> What's up, Doze Tacos? Said Voodoo Ranger is your jam. Yeah, Voodoo Ranger is fine. Uh, no problem with them. They have a bunch of variants of it now, too. Man, I can't remember the last time I had a Mickey's. Yeah. Patty said Murphy's was his favorite draft beer when he was in Ireland. A little hard to find around here. Yeah, I feel like I've seen it. I'm not sure if I have. Ray said he drank so much Mickey's in his 20s, it's still in his vein. <laughs> Finnegan's, yeah. Oh, Pudgy, you said they pull go they pull Guinness cold in Ireland. All right. I Yenzer, I don't see ESBs around barely at all anymore. When I first got into craft beer, I had a number of them, but I don't I don't I don't see that style very often. So it's funny because ESBs kind of roughly come out in spring and I didn't know like craft beer styles when I was first getting into craft beer. I literally, in my mind, I made it up that ESB stood for early spring beer. I think it was this time of year and it was, I was getting into craft beer because I uh, was working so much. So I would only have like one beer here and there. So I, that's when I finally realized, why am I going to drink a PBR if I'm only going to have one beer? Maybe it should be something interesting. 
So I'd just go to the grocery store and pick something out that looked cool. But I remember seeing the ESB and it had a cool label. And I can't remember what brewery was at the now. It's been so long. But uh, I thought it stood for early spring beer. <laughs> it's for anyone who doesn't know, you non drinkers, it's extra special bitter. Uh, extra special bitter, right? Extra, yeah. So. Muskrat said, room temp stouts out of the way. Yeah, I think good ones, you let them warm up and they taste better for sure. Like I said, it's a habit to pull them out of the fridge, but there's been times I remember where I've like, you know, done the hand warm up to get them to, you know. Uh, Eddie said his tradition is red breast Irish whiskey. The guy I bought this building from was a red breast Irish whiskey fan. He can't drink anymore because he has health problems and he has to take too many other medications, but that was his thing. Uh, decade old refined corned beef and cabbage recipe plus Irish soda bread. Nice. Tomorrow, I think at Missing Falls, they're making a Irish breakfast burrito. So that's probably what I'll end up ordering because I had it last year and it was delicious. Uh, Pudgy said supposedly the water difference. That matters in all brewing, you know what I mean? But do they brew American Guinness in the U.S.? I don't. I have actually don't even know. I thought it was all imported, but they probably scale it up, you know. But yeah, even here in Akron, like where the oldest breweries are, are on creeks because it was where the good water was. So, balancing bike life said that St. Patrick's Day was actually a celebration of the destruction of the Druids by St. Patrick, on behalf of the Holy Ro Roman Empire. What's up, William LeBron? Oh, yeah, that's Pudgy said he posted his current Irish whiskey collection in the Discord. See if I could get caught up on the chat, and then we'll, uh, then we'll, uh, yeah, I want to look at some bike picks because I'm, like I said, I'm not going to go super late here. So, yeah. Oh, grand subject. I did watch that Terry video too. Yeah. Crither said Red Hook has an ESB all over the Pacific Northwest, huh? Danny asked if I ever do rails to trails of any sort. Yeah, I mean, I tonight was a canal towpath, but yeah, like we we have. We have two right here in it, right here where I live. So all the time. But then when I travel, I look for them as well. Yeah. So all, all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Yinzer House at ESB early spring bike. Another excuse to build a new one. <laughs> oh, and Arthur said back to the uh, bikes. Uh, you're picky about the tires on all your bikes. Recently upgraded your older univags to make it a huge difference yeah i i as everyone knows i have a particular brand that i like for um uh my most serious bike but yeah i tires make a huge difference uh now that i've found the tires i like i just keep using them as they wear out Yeah, Ray's sort of saying the beer explosion, how Guinness may be a more traditional stout, and now our stouts are so much more, just so much more flavor. I still would guess that Guinness was more roasty back in the day than it is now because those roasted malts that gave it the dark color. I'm guessing it's just cheapened because it's such a giant company, but I could, I could be wrong. Dimitri said he needs a new bike so he could... Uh, Post more pics. <laughs> uh, Mr. Pitt said, I look like a straight up drawing of the old Speed Racer cartoon. Huh. 
Oh, D'Amico, what's up? He said the extreme uh, penny farthing video is a must see. Yeah, that's great. It's linked in the Discord. Oh, yeah, William, you asked about the uh, Yeti takeover of Kelly's Island. I'm still on the fence on that one just because I'm so busy around then. I'm just going to wait till it's real close, but. Hey, what's up, Dave? Dave said, just found my channel while researching some bikepacking stuff and planning for an Albany to Montreal ride this summer. Oh, cool. So that would be like, would you go up the Empire? So you'd go up the Empire Trail and over. Awesome. And you said, uh, restored Romani. Oh, hope you have a, hope you have a blast. Thanks. Oh yeah, racer St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick is the patron saint of Ireland. There's a real, there's a real history, but it's definitely more. The thing with St. Patrick's Day in the U.S. why it's almost more popular. Well, I guess, I guess until very recently, it wasn't like massively celebrated in St. in uh, Ireland, but it was like a um, kind of an Irish pride thing because you know cities like Boston and stuff had so many Irish and it was like just became more of a thing to remember home and celebrate your heritage where the Irish were looked down on pretty much everywhere including in the United States for so long so yeah just you know they were escaping Ireland because of the famines and coming here so they were poor so like this country always has done they use a scapegoat and the Irish were the scapegoat for political football reasons for a time just like we do now with immigrants south of the border just total fucking bullshit. So, yeah, so St. Patrick's Day got so huge in the United States because it was a way for that community to show their pride. And so, yeah. I mean, for like, you know, racer, like college kids and the fake, that's why I don't like fake St. Patrick's Day and all that stuff because that, that is what it be, has become. So, Chris, you said you're listening tonight as you install Zip Service Course SL70 bars, compression break compression list break housing, and new tape. It'll stop snowing eventually. <laughs> yeah, hopefully it does for you guys. It's so crazy how mild our winter is and how some of you guys are just getting hammered. I know I started off talking about that, but it's just wild. Uh, bouncing bike life says, I don't know if I would want to ride in a group gassed up on cabbage and beer farts. <laughs> I don't know. We have a, we have fun every year doing it. So <laughs> yeah, racer, yeah, total, total, uh, total nerds over here. Oh, nice Pudgy. I see you shared your playlist. It's also going to share your, uh, oh yeah, the, booze collection pudgy's uh irish whiskey collection here okay, i know twan had shared this one too um uh, and funny Brad said this is a uh, good whiskey for highballs. Then Eddie had the elder pine in Gathersburg, Maryland. Nice. That looks like a cool spot. Racer X eight four one oh seven one two super shattered ten dollars. Your next beer's on me. <laughs> Thanks so much, Racer. <laughs> I think I'll have to uh tomorrow's first beer I'll get for me and Darrow and let him know that you you bought it and so appreciate it. Did I get to Michael's comment? No, I can't remember. I got sidetracked, but thanks, Racer. Montreal has been slammed with snow this winter. Coincidentally, your first year of winter cycling. Yeah. 
first year I winter cycled, we first rode through the winter, we got a ton of snow too, but it was always the right amount where we could still do it on studied, studded tires and stuff like that. So, How did you say that? Let me see what Pudgy's on Pudgy's picture. Said the Connemara and Powers aren't imported, so they're special occasion only. Oh, they're not imported here. You have to get them in Ireland is what you're saying. I got you. I got gotcha. you. Hey, what's up, Kim? Kim said, oh, I didn't have it on the screen, but thought I did. Kim said, building a 2016 Giant Revolt bought a frame out of Chicago, blew your REI dividends on shifters, cassette tires, and brake calipers. It's funny. I blew my, I didn't have a huge REI dividend because I only kind of stop when I'm on tour getting some camping stuff, but I used mine on a couple tools. I got one of those wolf tooth uh, pliers for quick links and stuff like that. And then a, um, a chain tool, uh, the park chain tool that I love, the little portable one that I somehow lost one night while we were drinking, but yeah. Dropped it out of my bag when we were drinking one night, so. Yinzer said $10 is a fortune in Mickey's money. <laughs> yeah, it'll be it'll be two drinks tomorrow, so. Chris said that's a shelf of love. <laughs> is the giant, Kim, does your giant revolt because I believe a giant revolt is what now maybe that was a specialized. I rented a bike when I was in Tallahassee, 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 Florida. Was that a giant revolt? The year I had the whatever year's model, the one they rented me had this like monstrosity on the front of the handles bars that was some kind of cable ma management half hydraulic thing that drove me insane. So I hope yours doesn't have that. No, it must it would have been newer than a 2016. So Oh, Rusty's in Germany and he said the first decent hoppy beer he's had out there cuz yeah. Hop Hopmeister. Oh, you said it was, Chris? That is that is the bike I rode in Florida? I remember being so annoyed with that because I brought a bag and I couldn't put it on the front. And it was just such a wild setup. Do you like it? Do you like the setup? Is it worth it? Or was I just like super annoyed because I couldn't put my Swift Catalyst on it? I remember thinking it was over-engineered, though. I didn't have any problems with it. It all worked totally fine. Oh, it's the mechanical to hydro stem. Yeah, that's what it was. Oh, Chris said, yeah, the brakes suck, so it doesn't work. So. <laughs> oh, Matt said talking about that too. Giant Contend and some TCX had that. It was a hydro cable brake reservoir. All right, Black Ball, we'll see you later. Yeah, I I wonder if I'd be able to pull up a picture of it. If I, I thought I took a good picture of it, but did I post it to Flickr? Well, I also, I remember being annoyed, too, by the um, the seat post clamp wasn't a regular size either. So I remember I couldn't, like, adjust. I got out on the road, and, like, with my tool bag, I couldn't, like, adjust the seat post. And it was in, like, that weird spot. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you can't really see it from that angle, huh? But how oh, was the giant, yeah. Yeah, I kind of I found a way to rig up the the bag like sideways through the saddle loops, but they didn't have, you know, it's not like Brooks, so you didn't the valet straps didn't go through there normally. But oh, and I remember it was like a pain because my headlight had to go farther out on the bars as well. But 
Yeah, there was something with that seat post bolt that also drove me crazy. But did I take a close up of that bike? No, I guess I didn't. I still had a great time. I still had a still a decent bike to bomb around a city on, you know, for it was cheap. They didn't the rent the rental was really cheap, so just seems like an over engineered solution, but Race said, hadn't used the stem, but you've seen some use it with good results. I bet if you dialed in, it probably works fine. Um, oh, and Kim, you said you're using MicroShift 1x9 BB5s. Yeah, you're probably better off. Danny said, curious to see what vintage bikes Ireland had, and you found High Nelly bikes. Wow. Limited. That sounds like such an Irish name, too, right? Oh, Kim said, Kim, you said you also avoided the D-shaped post. Nice. Yeah, because, yeah. Oh, so Chris said seat post is a D and the adjuster bolt strips easily. Maybe that was my problem. Maybe because it's a rental. So maybe so many people had messed with that thing that maybe that's why my wrench didn't work, you know. Jason, you're asking about Brooks. I, I do all my Brooks saddles nose up. Uh all my Brooks saddles have like a, uh, it depends on the bike, but like a, a tilt up, it's pretty standard. Large says I'm not allowed to talk about B-17s anymore on the live stream, though. Said I'm boring the regulars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you saying on that? Yeah, everything was uncomfortable about that giant, but it wasn't my bike, so... It sounds like Kim got one that's old enough that's probably a little uh, a better of a like a more traditional bike than the later ones. So because Kyle says that seat fold is a wedge clamp, whole bike sucks. <laughs> Uh, Yenzer, I don't know the answer. I actually don't know the answer to that question. What's the rule on steer tube stem spacer these days? 20 millimeter under max? Huh. Yeah. Okay. It's just, most of you guys know I only have like two modern, uh, <laughs> two bikes with, uh, modern style, you know, stems. I love when you guys have the answers when I don't, which is most of the time. <laughs> Let's look at some some of your guys' bike picks. Oh, Pudgy, we got to show those. Slam beers, not stems. Yeah. I actually just <laughs> made that because that fr that line came from uh, Rick Urbanowski, but uh, he said that on the live stream. He I just made a pretty good joke on his Instagram today, I think. So <laughs> Pudgy had, um, if you guys know Yellowbird Threadworks, his buddy out in um, Connecticut has made these all these like really cool custom stem caps. So he sent some to Pudgy for his birthday. 
And then did some super limited edition ones with lugs that not drugs that are already sold out. But if you guys don't follow Yellowbird on, if you're on Instagram, check it out. The bag, it's a bag maker, but he also started making these really cool uh, stem caps. Aluminium. Yeah, uh, who is it? Uh, someone who follows the channel, I think his screen name is Cob Wobbler and makes some pretty funny videos. He's somewhere in the UK. And uh, he always comments every time I say aluminum. He's like, you mean aluminium? And I'm like, what do we need the extra syllables for? So, uh, Bouncing bike life, what you were saying about um, weren't hybrid bikes made to be pretty much gravel bikes? I think more like, I think they're more made to be comfortable rail trail bikes. So... There's some that are like really capable and were built really well, but also like Yonda has told me at Dirty River, the mechanic, uh, that some people are converting some hybrids that don't have the um, strength to really be, to be like hitting stuff that's more off-road and like rough gravelly. So it just, I guess I would say the answer is it depends. Um, some hybrids, yes, are almost like gravel bikes, you know, Jay Dandy rides a Gary Fisher that he's turned into like more of a gravel bike that works really well. But there's other ones that they have not like, they're not reinforced in the spots they need to be to be like true uh, gravel bikes. Like they're risky if you're going to like hammer them on off-road stuff. That's what I've been told. So. Demetrius, you said your mom's bike only came with 32 millimeters. There's even a couple brands I like that put way too narrow tires on their like gravel bikes that come out. I don't get it. Like it was like it would be the first thing I would change, but oh man, I can't remember where. Where's Ganaplex? It said that's their giant uh, single speed, but they uh, spring like they already got the daffodils blowing up. None of that's happening around here yet. I mean, it's today was nice, but I love the color schemes. We were just talking about giants, but the color scheme on this one is pretty sweet. Yeah, and like what Jay Dandy you were saying, how they evolved. One thing I would look at if you're talking about hybrids, I would look at the dropouts. You know, if they're real cheap, thin dropouts, then you know, I would I would consider what you're gonna ride, you know. So Eddie, you said Maryland's had daffodils for at least three weeks? Yeah, no, I've I've seen a little bit of the, um, in certain spots, I've seen a little bit of uh, the tops of daffodils, but definitely nothing blooming because even in my little veggie garden out back, daffodils come up every year and they're, I haven't even seen the tops of them in my garden yet. Mine has a big fence that kind of blocks it too, so. Oh, large marge, you said they're in the Netherlands. Okay, I couldn't remember. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, balancing bike life. I didn't mean to scare you. I don't I mean I don't know where the lines are, but you know, I would Yeah, I mean, I'm 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 obviously not the heaviest guy in the world, but I've also ridden my cheap 10 speeds over the roughest gravel too and I've never had a problem. I, I guess I kind of feel as someone who's online now with people watching that at least if a bike mechanic tells me something might be risky, it's worth at least saying out loud. But 
you know, me and Large would ride our, he'd ride a single speed and I'd be riding my vintage Vicon, which is supposed to have an aluminum death fork over like the roughest industrial gravel stuff. So, you know, there you go. And the bike I'm, you know, the bike I made the video about today has sheet metal dropouts and I went and rode that stuff anyways, you know, granted I got a little cushion with the 38s, but there you go. Pudgy said, big dudes just need good wheels for the most part. Let's see some more bike picks before I sign off. Oh, yeah, this is the one I wanted to show. This is uh, Lalo 94 because I, uh, I scored that uh, Alpine Stars, or you guys told me I pronounced that one wrong too, but... Um, this is what they were known for is this um these raised chain stays so i kind of so they said testing it out for the um for like bike packing but i know some of their lightweight ones people said how like the bottom bracket seemed to really sway back and forth and i know they even warranted some because they would uh they would crack but they made a bunch of different variations with a bunch of different tubing so it depends on which one you had. But a, mine doesn't have this at all. Mine's the traditional uh, two-triangle shape. But this is really cool. I think they look so cool. And I'm, I would want to look up this model and make sure of that, though, before you load it up on tour. So. I wish I could zoom in like halfway on that so we could just see it like, but I don't know why it doesn't do that. And uh, I mean, I know too, like, so you guys like were talking about the, um, even like I'm talking about this bike here and you guys are talking about like some of the stuff with being heavier in certain bike parts. Like like you said, if you have the right wheels and like, you know, you said you don't have a ton of the lesser type carbon stuff, like how many people have catastrophic frame failures? I it just see it even feels like stuff kind of happens over time. I'm not saying nothing could go horribly wrong, but even Jared who has Hope Cyclery posted that he ended up cracking his crust frame, but, you know, it cracked. He noticed it, stopped riding it. It wasn't, and he's going to get it fixed. That one's steel. But again, like, it didn't just fall to pieces, you know. And, like, even, I, like, I've heard with these outputs, what I read, because I got mine, so I did the research on this bike. Even with these bikes, the ones that had the tubing that did end up cracking, like, there was nothing about anyone getting injured or anything like that. It was just, like, you would notice it was, like, going, so... Yeah, those are really cool cranks. Tim said you've broken a shock mount bolt. That's about it. So. Yeah, I mean, huge jumps are going to change the equation of everything, right, Dimitri? And that's, I think, Pudgy, yeah, that's the... If your bike flexes or creaks, get off it and go to your shop. Yeah. And Large said the problem is a lot of people don't check their bikes. So, yeah, because even uh, my bike on the trainer right here has a carbon-wrapped fork. And my friend Stu said he had a bike with the same carbon-wrapped fork, wrapped fork. And there's, like, that's kind of the problem with the whole certain arrows of carbon things. He said he could feel it. He was had been descending like mountains over a weekend and something didn't feel right. And he took it into a shop and they they might have shined like a bright light through it or something. And it was all cracked and it was like could have been catastrophic. But I think that's a big difference between steel and aluminum and stuff like that than carbon. But yeah. Yeah, so Racer said, Tim, it's all about the odds, and some people go straight to, you're going to die. Yeah, and that's, like I said, I have a bike that mine is supposedly the safe version, but people are, like, still reach out to me, like, you can't ride that bike with that fork, like, you're going to die. And it's like, eh, you know.
Eddie said, fatigue does happen over time, but even the careful of us don't inspect every outing. For sure. I mean, I'm not going to pretend like I do, but, you know. Yeah, as someone who's going to keep my drivetrain running pretty clean and, you know, make sure my quick releases are closed, you're going to be just naturally see and change my bags a lot. You're going to start to see a lot of other stuff. But Large is definitely right that a lot of people don't even consider that. Um, like I joked about my look, my carbon uh, aluminum lugged, you know, glued carbon tubing bike, which I haven't actually gotten out on the road. Yanda joked, if anything about this bike ever feels comfortable, get off it and stop riding it immediately. <laughs> so... Tim's look is a death bike. <laughs> oh, Racer, you just said you watched the Viscount video? Yeah. It's interesting, so. Yinder said Sam Pilgrim takes a Walmart bike, not an MTB, down uh, Whistler's Trail, and you'll feel a lot better. Great video. I saw... I think I saw clips of that on Instagram, but not the video. Ah, Dimitri said, when you type a message and then put the emote after it, it deletes your message. That's, yeah, that's weird. Yeah, I agree, Pudgy. I mean, like, yeah, like a full, you know, whatever the number of people would say 30 point inspection on every ride. No, one's really going to do that, but yeah, your bike starts to feel a little bit different. You definitely need to, uh, think about what's going on. Like I was saying, Pudgy, like, it's just, I, I, it's one of those things where I think a lot of us who take care of to take care of a lot of our bikes, I'm not necessarily looking for things, but you're just naturally like observing it anyways, because as you just like do routine maintenance, you're going to see the stuff, you know, yeah, you know, washing my bike, I'm going to notice, you know, things. So, Arthur said, sold a bike. Uh, I'll, I'll explain why I laughed at that a little bit. Sold a bike recently. It was an old aluminum frame with carbon fork. Started hearing weird noise and the mechanic couldn't figure it out. So you, uh, so now you, it's the, the next guy is the one who's going to go over the bar when that fork <laughs> goes. <laughs> Large Marge said the amount of people out doing the Ohio to Erie Trail over the summer that haven't looked at or had their bikes or had their bikes looked at before beforehand is mind blowing. Yeah. Like I've said, I went out to that like a few years ago, opening day for trails up in Cleveland, and how many people had just pulled a bike out of the garage, like this ride, just every 20 feet someone was just going off the side of the trail because something was breaking on their bike and i'm just like you wouldn't even look at it because like when i decide to get back in cycling and i guess my perspective just comes from who i am right like i had my old mountain bike and i knew that like it had just been sitting in the basement for years and it was one of those things where i'm like i'm gonna take this to a shop get it completely gone over and then after that i'm going to teach myself how to maintain it you know and get back into it and all that but i'm like the fact that this thing has been sitting here i'm not just going to go ride 20 miles down the towpath or 300 320 miles across ohio but yeah it's it is i yeah just meeting people out you know just like how large meets them as they come through the shop on ohio to Erie. but yeah, just meeting people when you talk about bikes, how many people never consider that it, it might need some maintenance is really mind-blowing. So, I think, I guess, also, we're talking 
two different things. I think talking people who are jumping in this chat, you know, is a different level than your average cyclist. You know, most of you are here because you're nerds. And even like most of the newbies who jump in here, they're already asking these kind of questions. So they're, they're already thinking about this kind of thing. So, you know, I'm not ignoring like the idea of what I'm just saying, especially as I think of it more, but like in this group of people, you know, we have a group of people that are people who are pretty conscious of their bikes. So. Jay Danny, you said you like a silent bike. If you hear anything, it'll drive you crazy. That's how I am about my vintage bikes because, you know, the um, free wheels don't make any noise and stuff like that. So, yeah, I, I, I definitely agree on that, like, front. So. Tim said back in the 100 miles a week trail days, you would check your stuff every other ride. Yeah. Racer said there's a weird thing in cycling where some, where some people see only the right way. These people tend to be extreme mountain bikers and roadies. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, that's a different, definitely different. Like I, I've said like my, my two main bikes are really dirty right now and I'm going to wash them when I get the chance, but I'd rather ride them than, than stand around washing them. Like I'm not, that's not my, you know. Oh, Dimitri, you still haven't put more seal in it too. I'm like having one bike tubeless. I, I swear to God, I've never, like until it goes in the shop for something and large is like, oh, we should check the sealant. He's like, yeah, it's dry. You know? <laughs> You can't sell uh, you can't sell Jay Pudge, you can't sell Jay Dandy and Onyx Hub because he's a weight weenie. Uh Balancing Bike Life said you're no bike nerd yet. Seventy pounds of pressure and you're on the trail. <laughs> When I got back into riding and I got my dad's Motobicon that I was talking about earlier, I was still in his mentality, and I'm like, it's a road bike. And um, I bought these cheap tires, of course, from the bike shop down the street, and they kept, like, bulging in certain spots. And the second time I took it in, I'm like, I need a refund. Again, these tires are just bulging out. And I remember the guy just being like, don't fill it to the maximum amount of pressure. <laughs> so... <laughs> No, opposite Jay Dandy. They're yeah, they're the Onyx hubs are super silent, but you put one in your hand and it feels like someone has just put like uh a piece of lead in your hand. They're so heavy. Yinder said you love supporting bike shops, but the money and time you save doing most of your own work is endless. Yeah, it's it comes down to time and money, like you're saying. Like and it goes both ways for me. Sometimes I want to wrench on a bike and then sometimes I have a big event coming up and I'd rather the bike shop get it right and I'll spend the money on it. It goes, yeah, it just depends. Bradley, you said you're a first timer on a carbon fork and you're loving it. Steel frame, carbon fork, carbon wheels, the magic combo. Yeah, like I said my steel gravel bike is steel with a carbon fork and I really like the carbon fork, but that my bike had a really awful steel fork before, really heavy, and no flex. So I'm not totally opposed to steel forks, but I'm opposed to really shitty ones. So <laughs> Jay Dandy said he's weight conscious, not a weenie. Jay Dandy, when I had you on the live stream, you said you got rid of one of your water bottles for Road Apple Roubaix. That sounds like weight weenie to me. <laughs> Tim, you said you run 30 to 40 pounds on the mountain bike trails. 
I do too, but I'm running 42 millimeters on my 42 millimeter tires. <laughs> Dimitri, that's the... <laughs> Oh, I'm not a racer. I'm not saying Onyx hubs are bad. They're just, they're just, they're heavy. I, I've only held two of them in my hand, so I don't know what every one of theirs is like. But Otis was going to put one on uh, from Dirty River on one of his bikes, and it's totally silent. And I'm like, he spun it, and I'm like, oh, I love that because I like silent hubs too. And then he put it in my hand, and I was like, I, it is. It is so noticeable. I mean, it's so noticeably heavy. It's not like it's kind of heavy. Uh, and I know they make a few different ones, but like the one he put in my hand is not kind of heavy. It's like the heaviest hub that can exist. <laughs> yeah, so, and I'm not, I'm not a weight weenie. So I'm like, again, I'm, I wouldn't even be opposed to using one, I, but I'm just saying they are like extremely noticeably heavy. Oh, Tim, you're running 26 by 2.5s. I guess I... I guess in my 2.1s, I still put like 35 in there, but they're tube tires and stuff like that. So, that's true, Jay Dandy. You don't have like a full, you're not putting a titanium bolt in your uh, cranks or anything like that. So. <laughs> All right, I gotta I gotta wind it up. This is supposed to be a a one hour stream tonight, not a. Uh, that was my goal because I, like I said, I'm exhausted. I'm getting up early. Oh, Tim, you're saying you have four inch of travel too, so tire pressure isn't going to be a big deal. Like, yeah, on my on my gravel bike, if I'm riding rougher stuff, like. I will con I will consider the ride I'm going on and run less pressure so I don't get bounced around for sure. So I'm guessing the real decline would have a check night check mark by his bag by his name, right? <laughs> do they do check marks on YouTube? When Terry jump, jumps in here, does he get a check mark? I can't remember. I think so, right? Bedtime is still bedtime. It's early out there and uh it's earlier on the west coast. It's it's late here. <laughs> Well, if you are the real decline, I love the channel. Huge fan. Uh, just watched the latest video before I started streaming. So, all right, nerds, gonna wrap it up. We'll be on live on Tuesday, and uh, if we survive tomorrow. So, yeah, wrapping it up here. Peace, everybody. Okay. okay, bye. All right. Okay, yeah. this is <laughs> Fitzwater photo.